Welcome to the Q3 community call. So much has happened already this year. I have so much to cover today um, because in fact, lots is going on. Um, and I hope, you know, this will give you an overview, not only of the projects that are going on in Finos right now, especially uh, following the pattern that we started in the last couple of, this is our third community call. Um, I've, we have consistently heard positive feedback on having our focus projects present. And so today you get it, uh, you know, the bulk of, of today's call is gonna be as usual on, you know, the actual activity that is going on in, in Finos and you hear it directly from our project leads. Uh, before we do that, I just wanna give you a quick update, um, try to keep it uh, below 10 minutes. I'm gonna just turn off my notifications here, sorry about that. Um, because I know that there's a lot going on, we certainly feel it uh, uh, as, as the team, and I wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to jump in also on some of the initiatives that are maybe not yet fully open source or in the formation stage. So this moving forward will be a really, hopefully useful venue for you to find ways to get engaged. So we start, I'll start with the state of the community. I'll, I'll give it to our director of community, James, to run the focus projects update uh, section. And then, you know, we'll keep a few minutes at the end to, hey, show you uh, the new and simplified governance that we put together following this band of programs as well as, uh, um, you know, what support we provide maintainers, uh, I'm assuming there's many project maintainers here, um, to enforce the governance. You know, our goal is not to create burden, but to foster innovation in the community. And so we wanna make sure that, uh, you know, we provide you tools to do so. Um, and if we're good, we should be able to leave some time for questions at the end. Uh, of course, feel free to drop your questions in the chat at any time, uh, and we'll try to address them at the end. Um, this deck will be shared, so no need to take too many screenshots, uh, but we put together also a couple of tips and call to actions for you to get engaged. It is really uh, a unique moment in our history, as I hope you, you'll see over the next couple of slides. So getting started, uh, and again, hi everyone. I'm so glad to see uh, uh, you know such a full house. Um, we started the standard slide. Uh, actually, we revamped it a little bit. Uh, we have uh, uh, reached. Uh, we have passed 40, 41 now between uh, um, incubating and active projects. Over the last quarter, we have added two new active, sorry, two new incubating projects. One project became became active. Uh, we'll show you the details in the next slide. Um, we are seeing actually, also from a membership standpoint, uh, a strong momentum. Um, of course, I think like pretty much any business out there, uh, you know, the pandemic has impacted some of the you know, conversations that we're having with new uh, members or prospects of the foundation, uh, but we expect, um, you know, we have a very strong uh, pipeline and we think by the end of the year, you'll see some good, uh, interesting new logos here. <clears throat> Before we jump into, um, you know, the, the projects and the initiatives, I just wanted to spend a second to acknowledge, um, you know, an important conversation that A, we've had at board level um, in the July board meeting, which was the first as the Linux Foundation uh, uh, governing board under the Linux Foundation. Um, but that of course, I'm sure has, you know, uh, touched many of you. Um, we recognize that as much in financial services, as much in open source communities, diversity and inclusion has been a, you know, it's, it's very much an open issue. 
and it's not uh, uh, in any way something that we can just nice to have. So we've had a really deep conversation with the board, um, you know, the whole finance team and the board. Uh, it was very refreshing in terms of we think we are all on the same page in the need, sort of immediate need to do something here. And so, you know, there's a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. First and foremost, again, as you participate to our activities, please take a second to review our code of conduct. Um, it does ensure, it does, uh, uh, you know, draw the guidelines to make sure that we have a truly inclusive community. Again, open source doesn't mean, unfortunately, in and of its own, um, you know, that everyone has the same opportunities. And so we gotta make sure that we, that we keep an eye on that and we, you know, actively create these opportunities. Um, and as usual, remember that being of the Finos team is responsible for enforcing the code of conduct. So if you see anything or if you experience anything, you can always reach out to us confidentially. Um, the second point is, uh, you know, in order to, to impact change here, um, there has to be a joint approach, you know, top down from our board, but certainly there's only so much that we can do as a board. Um, it needs to come from the community as well. And so with the board, we have approved our first special interest group on diversity and inclusion, which is starting uh, healing up to action right now to really help us define strategic things that we can do beyond the statement, beyond, uh, uh, you know, putting, putting something out there. Um, and so everyone is welcome to join. Please let me or Alexandra know if you'd like to join. Um, you can expect uh, concrete proposals and strategies put in place uh, already by the end of this year and in 2021. Um, as far as the community goes, again, I know this is an important topic for my community and I would hope for everyone. Um, of course, we'll discuss with the SIG more general strategies that we can apply, but we are very much keen to hear your thoughts. Um, with the Linux Foundation, we have access to, you know, very powerful mentorship platform called Community Bridge. Many of you uh, would was to put put themselves forward as a mentor. Um, we could uh, uh, definitely create opportunities for minority underrepresented minorities. So, I just wanted to make sure that this has been uh, that you knew that this has been top of mind for us, and we will continue. To, uh, we, we, I. I expect you to, sorry, sorry, I expect you'll see concrete mm -hmm. in the next months. Moving on, again, I wanted to keep it under 10 minutes here. Um, there's been so much going on. Um, I am not going to be able to cover every single item here in detail, um, but we're certainly seeing a strong momentum in contributions of new projects, um, especially from financial institutions, which um, you know, it's been a long way, uh, uh, you know, it's been a, a long road uh, to get there, but I think we are in the, uh, uh, you know, in the right spot. Data Hub was contributed by City earlier in the year. Uh, uh, Morphir is one of the latest contribution. It's a very exciting one, uh, which we're actually announcing tomorrow uh, together with the contribution from EPAM um, Glue. Um, we're actually announcing by a press release. And finally, not only we have new projects coming in, but projects maturing through the life cycle. So Walls, who you know, recently, just recently joined the foundation about six months ago, has already reached active stage with multiple um, users and contributors to the project. So um, I'm very excited to see uh, so much activity and we're seeing, you know, as you'll see in the next slide, so much more in the pipeline. A um, couple of words on the merger with the Linux Foundation. We actually have completed the merger and we are officially part of the Linux Foundation as of July 1st. Um, the transition has been, I hope, smooth for you folks. Um, it's definitely not completed um, in terms of all the systems, uh, but what we learned is that our infrastructure and the left infrastructure are very complementary and so we expect over the next 
six months or so uh, to be able to complete that. Um, we launched OSSF uh, on 12th and 13th of November. Um, um, this will be <coughs> the first virtual OSSF and it's co-produced with the Linux Foundation. So it's very exciting. We have uh, some really great speakers. Uh, make sure that you register today. There's no travel involved. Uh, I wish I could, I could, uh, uh, you know, shake all of your hands, uh, but maybe it's going to be for a for a next edition. Um, again, overall, the, the we are seeing capabilities, uh, and you should consider capabilities like training, uh, mentorship, event management, me, uh, meetup. Uh, these are all capabilities that we get. Uh, in a way, for free as part of the Linux Foundation uh, membership. So, you know, hopefully that gets your traded juices going. Um, we have ramped up, as you know, our uh, virtual uh, um, engagement. We now have quarterly community calls. We have almost uh, weekly meetups, not bi weekly. We also launched a podcast and we'd love to get your rating. That's an easy way for you to help as grow the footprint of our uh, uh, publications. Um, so we think, you know, we set up several virtual channels for the community to interact. We'd love to hear from you if you have additional ideas on how we you know, can complete this transition to pretty much the new normal. And then, you know, we have so many other activities going on that I'm not gonna go into the detail of. Um, I only want to pick, um, you know, a couple of them um, because we'll hear about DevOps uh, in our uh, focus projects, but I want to just pick on the first two of them. Um, we have launched our first version of the uh, Pinus landscape. If you're familiar with other projects in the Linux Foundation and you go to landscape.pinus.org, you'll see all the Pinus projects in a landscape view. Uh, uh, <coughs> a technical, if you want, architectural breakdown of where they sit. Um, this is a collaborative uh, uh, effort. It's all hosted on GitHub. If, if you think your project should be listed there and it's not, all it takes is a pull request. If you think we should be expanding this to, you know, other open efforts in the industry, uh, we'd love your contributions. But again, this gives us a whole lot of visibility in the broader uh, um, Linux Foundation ecosystem, as well it starts to really plot, you know, where the business can use some of our projects, which I think it's really important in a community like us, where we sort of live in the middle, at, at the crossroads of uh, sort of technical and, and business uh, engagement. Um, so we'd love, we'd love to hear uh, from you and how we can improve and, and extend this. This is meant to become, you know, the uh, uh, main entry point uh, for discovering our projects. Um, and then on a second sort of key initiative that we launched this quarter, uh, we have finally, uh, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, exploring how open source can um, improve regulation. I mean, in the spirit of you know, we collaborate on common requirements, we collaborate on items that uh, are non-competitive and that, you know, typically allow for cost neutralization. Well, we've had some really strong initial interest from members uh, uh, and actually regulators. Uh, and so we are starting a special interest group. You'll hear much more about it. Uh, we're doing a lot of campaigns. We're looking at uh, partnering with other organizations. In the meanwhile, if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can sign up in our uh, open source impact page, or you can even join the conversation as we're looking to form a special interest group that is focused on open source financial regulation. So just wanted to call these two out because they are showing a lot of potential. And if you have or are exposed to you know, regulatory implementations, that might benefit from open source or open standards, please let us know. Um, again, so much to cover. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to, 
uh, but you can see that we have several projects and memberships and sort of this idea of collaborating with other consortia, becoming the open source enabler for other consortia. So we're really exploring so many ways to allow you, you know, to have opportunities to collaborate and deliver value through uh, our projects. Um, not only uh, uh, partnerships and, and new projects, uh, but we're also looking at, again, the infrastructure that is provided from the Linux Foundation. Uh, we have a mentorship platform, we have a training platform. These are all areas that, if not this year, we can certainly leverage next year to build uh, you know, even more value and even more potential support and acceleration for our projects. Um, we have so many projects in the information stage. Um, we're likely going to talk about them in the next call once they are in the foundation. And without, uh, before I, I pass it to James, I just wanted to call out, um, you know, folks, there's so much going on, so much uh, 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 meat on the fire. Um, this has truly been an unprecedented year for us and for everyone, of course, but um, we're now seeing, again, the banks leading the charge and being uh, at the forefront of our projects. And so I think that yeah. is an important uh, um, you know, element for everyone and hopefully encourages you to get actively engaged in the foundation if you're not. Um, here, there's a couple of, you know, ideas that we discussed with the board uh, would be very functional. Oh, I, okay. Uh, excuse me, do you mind muting whoever I'm hearing on the line? Um, this is gonna say, these are some areas where you know, we identified concrete actions the community can take to help uh, PNS achieve the goals that were set for us this year. Um, you know, I'm, we will circulate this deck, but I think if you can, you know, work on evangelism and promoting your project or generally open source in the industry if you're not a, a, a project maintainer right now. Um, you can refer projects to us or refer people to join our community list. That's really about sending an email. I am very much happy to offer swag. Uh, uh, we have pretty cool new swag that is coming up with Linux Foundation plus Kano's branding in there. So if you can prove you've sent three people to our community list, I'd be happy to, to send swag. Uh, and actually pretty cool one. Um, we have, you know, maintain open open issues and tag them with good first issue. Um, and I don't know if you know, but we have an aggregator. We aggregate, aggregate all Kinos repositories and good first issues, and we try to funnel our new contributors there. So by just tagging your issues with good first issue when appropriate, you actually empower your project to you know, be seen in multiple places, and hopefully that creates a ramp on ramp for your contributors. And then finally, um, you'll learn, we'll talk more about it today, but we are moving most of our uh, known project specific collaboration to our community repository. So make sure that you start it and make sure that you follow the issues that are going on in there. You'll see that many of the activities we talk about today are actually being discussed in GitHub issues transparently in the community repository. And with that, a little bit of a typo here, should have been Q3, uh, apologies for that. But James, do you wanna take it away? Yeah, absolutely. Um, welcome everybody. Um, and I was just gonna say, Gab, yeah, we are on Q3. This year seems <laughs> to be accelerating through. Um, this is our third iteration of Focus Projects. Uh, so Q3. Nice one, thank you. And so if you could um, just go onto the next slide, that'd be, that'd be great. So we have a slightly different running order to this actual slide, um, but this slide actually shows you, um, or shows the community on the call, who our focus projects are um, and what stage within the Finos lifecycle they are. So within formation for Q3, we have Alloy and Morpher, and within incubating, we have Data Hub, 
uh, data helix, DevOps mutualization, and security reference data. Um, but because of um, the way the um, because of time pressures and people schedules, we're actually going to go straight in with DevOps mutualization by Dave Katz, and then we'll go over to Rob Underwood at Finos um, for Alloy, and then I'll introduce um, the the other focus projects thereafter. So if you can go on to the next slide, we'll go over to Dave. Thanks, James. Uh, can you hear me okay? You're, you're coming through loud and clear, Dave. Excellent. Okay, yeah, so uh, about three months ago, we started discussing kind of the common problems we had with uh, delivering software at large uh, regulated institutions. And then at some point through that process, the DevOps mutualization effort was born. Uh, and uh, you know, we, we've had a really good conversation in the last two sessions that we had and agreed that we should be setting up a, a special interest group. And I think you'll see links here to the uh, decisions that were made to do that. And at the same time, try to figure out what kinds of problems we are trying to solve uh, by ourselves that we could be doing together uh, you know, that aren't really a source of competitive advantage. And among them are trying to you know, continuously collect evidence that regulators want to see that we are demonstrating good software practices. So anything in the software development life cycle, uh, evidence of testing, evidence of two, four eyes review of things. Uh, and, and so we're, we're, gonna, we're looking forward to a point where we can start to share some of those between ourselves and, and, and just see all the approaches and how we've, you know, many of us have implemented our own technology solutions to address parts of those problems. Uh, you know, we had a, we had a nice representation at the last uh, the last two meetings. Second one, uh, you know, uh, you know Morgan Stanley, City, Deutsche Bank. You can read it on the slide. I don't need to read it to you. Uh, and we had uh, vendors on as well. I do think that we should. Uh, th there's an opportunity to grow that audience, and uh, I'm looking forward to members of this community nominating the right people to join us on these calls because. Really, this is a great place for us to enhance our productivity, and it's a very safe place for us to collaborate on a very safe topic. Uh, so I think the next session we're going to have is really, uh, you know, one of the things we kind of discussed was what is the glue of, you know, that we tend to need to put together all of the different tools that we use, both commercial and open source, um, either glue them together to orchestrate setting up a well-controlled source control all the way to deployment to production, or what is the extra namespacing that we need to do to kind of keep a project life cycle or an asset life cycle in place and then associate all of these uh, provisioning of various development tools and tool chains uh, and just make sure that they're associated with a project that has a life cycle and roles and access control and all that. So uh, I kind of want to see if we can share some of that because I know at least two or three uh, you know, financial institutions that have something they've had to do on their own and it would be really nice as we look at graduating to the next generation of their tool sets to not have to do this on our own in parallel at multiple institutions. So that's a bit of an update. If you're interested, there's plenty of links on this and on the overview slide that I think was uh, the previous slide that uh, James had. And uh, yeah, there's my update. That's amazing, Dave. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining the call. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass the mic over to Rob Underwood from Finos uh, to talk us through Alloy. Great, thank you. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Yep, thanks. How are you? Um, so thank you to everybody for being on the call today. Um, uh, we just want to echo what's been already shared. Tons of good stuff happening right now. Um, so a few things I wanted to just share about Alloy. I think many people are probably aware, but Alloy is uh, a logical modeling tool and language uh, and uh, uh, workbench uh, that is being contributed by Goldman Sachs. Um, we've been running a pilot with um, uh, about a half dozen organizations, mostly Finos members, for the better half of uh, for, for most of this year. Um, and during that uh, pilot, we have been modeling uh, FX options and commodity reference data. Um, so specifically, we have been um, uh, using um, uh, as a starting point the is the CDM uh, extend um, the FX option and um, to propose uh, those changes back into the canonical CDM uh, that's built in Rosetta. Um, we are um, 
Um, all, we've also been working, uh, there's a separate work stream that's been working on building commodity reference data. Um, and uh, that is uh, focused, uh, was focused first and foremost on oil swaps. So that both those pilot work streams have been, are coming to an end now, and we are preparing to, uh, uh, Goldman in particular is preparing to actually open source the code in late September. So that's sort of the conclusion of the, uh, or the fulfillment of the commitment that Goldman made on stage at our open source strategy forum last November that it would be open sourcing that code. Um, so we're all really excited that. Um, we have some, uh, you'll be seeing more information about um, office hours, um, the general meeting uh, on October 15th, and then we're going to have some developer focused recurring meetings that you'll see some updates about. Um, and then we have our, uh, you'll see some presentations about a lot coming up at OSU on October 29th, and then also the open source strategy forum itself on November 12th and 13th. Um, and then if you go to finos.org or you can actually now go to not only sign up for updates, but actually to request an account on the shared instance. So if you'd like to get a account uh, on the Alloy platform, um, you can feel free to go there and uh, you'll uh, be able to get an account. One of the things we'll be doing over the course of the next four to six weeks is actually transitioning the instance, which was just being used primarily by the participants in the pilot um, to a um, kind of a fully shared instance that anyone in our community can request an account uh, on and in turn use to both try out Alloy um, and then also um, continue the shared modeling activities that we've been doing around FX options and commodity reference data. Um, if you do any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to uh, any of us. Um, uh, you know, I think you'll see a lot of uh, good stuff. I don't want to take a ton of time on this. I think we've talked about a loyal lot of uh, previous calls, but uh, you know, really exciting. Um, I think the other thing that I would just highlight is I think another way to think about Alloy is not only as something that's being contributed as open source, and I know some of the banks have already expressed interest in launching their own instances of Alloy. But also think of Alloy as being a tool that um, other Finos projects will be able to use when they need to do their own uh, logical modeling uh, and other types of activities. I think that's a great point, Rob, um, that you made here. I, I think what we found was that Alloy, and actually us as Finos hosting an instance that is transparent and sort of neutral, um, really help bridge some of the gaps and bringing in, you know, business folks directly into the community to solve problems regarding data modeling and interoperability, um, you know, in a common place, which actually then flows back into a GitLab repository. So actually lends itself to open source collaboration. So I, I'm really excited to get to the point of open sourcing and, you know, shout out to the Goldman team and, and also Rob for all the amazing work on this. I really would just, um, hours, late hours that the Goldman engineering team has been putting into preparing has been really tremendous. So thank you. I know for the Goldman team on the call, but it's been great. And I also just did want to call out um, GitLab, uh, a Finos member who's uh, been with us all. Alloy is built on top of GitLab. Um, it uses GitLab for the its underlying SDLC. So thank you to the GitLab team for all of their work on this. Um, and then I also do a special shout out as well to it. They've been incredible partners through all this, really, really active, really engaged. Um, and also Rignosis, which is the organization that maintains the the canonical version of of the is the CDM and Rosetta. All those organizations have been phenomenal to work with and super supportive of the entire effort, as have all of the participants in the pilot, um, which have been great. It's been a I, 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 the feedback I've heard and what I've observed is that this, this six month pilot of Alloy prior sourcing has been a wild success. So thank you to everybody involved. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, I truly do appreciate your update. Um, and that takes us on nicely to more fur, um, with Stephen from Morgan Stanley. So Stephen, if you're on, on the call, feel free to, to update us. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Thanks for uh, having me here. 
Um, yeah, so I'm happy to report that Morpher has been fully migrated over to FinOS. Um, so amongst other things, yes, that means that it's now uh, accessible through landscape and, and uh, you can find it there. Uh, we also have the links on the page. Uh, just for a bit of review, review Morpher is uh, a, a bit of complementary technology to what we just heard about in that it's all about business logic modeling. So Morpher provides a set of transparency and efficiency tools for users and developers uh, so that they can separate the representation of their business logic from the implementation. So that means that we're, we're separating the what we're doing from how we're doing it. And this has a range of uses, uh, a few uses that are in, of interest to this group are things like sharing business logic, like regulatory rules or pricing calculations. Um, these can be shared uh, and then made to adapt onto existing systems, which is important for firms who, um, you know, d doing a complete rewrite to, to regulations is maybe not desirable. It's, it's more desirable to adapt the regulation onto the existing systems. Uh, we have things like application modeling, which is defining a service in terms of pure business logic, and then automating the code that makes that business logic run on a particular platform of choice. So this is interesting in that it gives us an opportunity to automate enforcement of various coding standards, maybe regulatory requirements, uh, things that we would normally ask our developers to do, we can then automate and ensure enforcement of those. Uh, we have visualization tools, which are tools to help users understand the behavior of an application. So to give insight and transparency into why an application is behaving the way it is. Um, and so those are, I think, some of the things that are particularly interesting to, to our industry and to the FinOS members. Um, we're particularly excited about the fact that you know we're joining an ecosystem and that gives us a, an opportunity to look at the, uh, the collaboration between um, projects like Alloy, um, the FinReg initiative, uh, many of the other projects in FinOS. So that's an exciting prospect. Um, and then finally, this is, a, this is a major contribution for Morgan Stanley, and I think it highlights a growing trend in, in both Morgan Stanley and in, and in the industry. Um, so yeah, to wrap up, I think now that we're, we're, we're migrated completely, you, you can find us on Landscape or any of these direct links on the presentation. Thank you so much. I just wanted to uh, echo how excited we are. I think we're starting to see, to your point, the projects sort of potentially building on each other to create, you know, uh, um, exponential value. So I am really excited again for everyone. We are announcing this contribution tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned and help us help us uh, spread the word. Uh, and of course, you know, most importantly, get engaged. This is this is a really cool project. Hey, Ab, can I just add thing? I'm sorry. I just wanted to just highlight that um, there is some some discussion already happening, but there are some probably really interesting ways in which Morpher and Alloy could be used in conjunction. And I also wanted to highlight, obviously, Morgan and Goldman Sachs are fierce competitors in the marketplace, but the way in which um, both organizations sort of put forward Morpher and Alloy respectively and said, hey, you know, there may be some opportunities here maybe to work on, um, you know, a shared intermediate representation or something like that. It's it's a great example, Morpher and Alloy, of how um, different organizations are building off of the of each other. And when we're now we're finding projects that potentially could work together. So I just really wanted to thank Stephen and Dove and the rest of the Morgan Stanley team because just the way that they sort of brought Morpher to Finos and the way in which it sort of was done in conjunction with some of the stuff happening with Alloy is just a great example of the collaboration that's happening within our community amongst organizations that, you know, otherwise in the marketplace are competing together pretty fiercely, or competing against each other pretty fiercely. Great point, Rob, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, Stephen, for your update. Um, so, Gab, if you can move on to the next slide. 
And so this um, brings me on to two synthetic data projects that are both focused together, um, one being Data Hub and the other being Data Helix. And I'd like to introduce you to Andrew Carr and the team who are going to take us through their update. Hello. Yeah. So for those who don't know me, I'm Andrew Carr. I work at Scott Logic. Um, so yeah, we have, I'm part of, I guess I'm the technical lead for the Data Helix project. And Paul Groves, who I believe is also in the call, uh, from City is the tech lead for the Data Hub project. Um, and uh, what we've done, so I guess in the Q3 update, um, we have a virtual team who uh, meet every Monday and chat through, I guess, what we're trying to do is unify uh, the, the vision for these projects to make sure, because they, they all kind of play in a similar space, which is synthetic data generation. Uh, and I think there's been a lot of interest in synthetic data generation. Certainly, there's been a lot of conversations about it within FinOps. Uh, in the last few months. Uh, and it seems to be driven in part due to this move to the cloud. So I think there's a lot more interest in, in uh, how people can move to the cloud without uh, using real data. And I think synthetic data is one way to support that. So I guess myself and Paul and the team have been pulling in uh, requirements from as many conversations as we, we can. And uh, we've got a bit of a flow diagram on the right, which shows how we're uh, producing our kind of uh, uh, our roadmap for the data hub and data helix, but also synthetic data within FinOS uh, going forward. And we're quite keen to chat to more of you about requirements. And then given that we've had so many conversations, really produce a, a kind of roadmap of if, if you know, we're going to move forward with the data hub and the data helix, how do we go forward uh, and, and what's the best way to support uh, all these requirements that are coming up? Uh, and we're also quite keen to review the synergy with uh, the other FinOS projects, and I think particularly Alloy and Morphia, uh, because again, they're in the data modeling space, and it feels like there's a lot of synergy that could be had if we have uh, common API points or common languages or ways we can communicate together. Uh, and I guess, uh, Paul, if uh, you're on the line, is there anything you want to give an update specifically on the data hub itself? Hi, Andrew. No, I, I'm good. So. Yes, I'll carry on, really. <laughs> okay, and uh, also, I guess, joining that virtual team is also Genesis, um, who have been uh, bringing, I guess, the kind of neural network uh, information and knowledge. So if you guys are on, do you guys want to give a quick shout out and update at all? Yeah, we're really happy to uh, be a part of this. Um, traditionally, synthetic data was generated in a parametric fashion. However, recent advancements in neural network design, for example, generative adversarial networks allow it to be built in a non-parametric way. And uh, that's our kind of main contribution to this project. So I guess that's, yeah, that's the update from us. That's great, Andrew. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thank you also to the UBS team who have put their, their hand up to, to get involved. They're kind of tracking the project and also that we've got um, teams from within City who have also taken interest as well um, and are tracking. And thanks, Ben and Harry from uh, Jensen uh, for everything that you're contributing into Data Hub and Data Helix. Yeah. Right. There's a little bit of background noise. So I don't know if um, people are unmuted, but if you could put yourself back on mute, that would be brilliant. Um, so moving on to our final update. So this is um, a great opportunity to introduce synthet um, sorry, security reference data and Celeste Pandey from Nomura. I think um, <coughs> Celeste got called away. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, Tasha from Venice. Celeste got called away. Um, uh, on a meeting this morning, and he was hoping to be joining right around now, but I, I don't see him on the call. So I'll go ahead and give the update for security reference data. And if he, he does join, he can add anything in there. Um, so I don't, I, 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 this project has been around for a little while. Um, and really, it's the, it was born from the challenges within the industry about having many, many different um, identifiers, largely for securities, and then, um, and, and also how that relates to issuer. You know, complicated problem. Lots of um, lots of individual companies, um, you know, banks, financial institutions in particular, spend a lot of time doing mapping on their own. So the idea was to look at how you can share that, you know, across the industry and. Um, do that mapping once <laughs> instead of repeatedly within individual organizations. Uh, and so recently, um, in fact, at, at the, a meeting in August, they presented a new proposal to build a mapping tool. Um, 
which really kind of enables the industry to come together and use a, an open mapping tool so that you don't, again, have to do that work individually. Um, and it caters for covering lots of different types of identifiers um, for licenses where, you know, some information needs to be licensed and, um, and others is, other data is open. And so that, that, um, that's been proposed. Uh, there were quite a few um, new participants on the call, which is great. And the next steps are really to create the detailed project plan, define the workflow, I make sure that use cases and user stories are covered so that um, what actually gets built does solve the industry challenge. Uh, and so those are some of the specific actions um, or items coming up in the next coming week. So we do definitely you know, invite any, anyone who's interested in helping to solve this problem across the industry to, to join. Um, and you can email um, that, that email address, which you know, it's probably meaningless, um, to get involved or, you know, or, uh, or me or Silesh um, or Aitana directly as well if you have any questions. And then the other, the other thing I want to mention quickly is that um, it has been the security reference data project, but given some of the work that's been happening in Alloy, given that reference data tends to be um, a big challenge kind of across the board, the, the group um, has agreed that it makes sense to expand the scope. So for example, some work that was happening in Alloy around currency reference data, there's a, a kind of a natural home for it within reference data um, to map out a currency object model and then the specific actual um, data attributes for that model across all of the currencies, um, you know, and, and maybe some of the, the um, precious metals as well. Um, so it's an active area. Please come get involved. We'll be adding those work streams. Um, and I, I guess I guess that's about it. Thank you very much, Tosha, for um, stepping in for Celeste there. That's very much appreciated. And thank you, everybody from our project teams for getting involved in your updates this afternoon and the tremendous effort that's going into all of the strengthening and building of your projects. So thank you very much. And so, Gab, it's back to you after our focus project update. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I want to echo James and thanks all the project leads who are, again, putting so much effort um, into not only the project, but really to, as you, as we've seen with Alloy Morphit, that we're seeing with currency and commodity reference data merging into the reference data effort. Again, it's not only the coding, it's really the, uh, you know, open approach that everyone in the community is taking. And, you know, I know that it's been a really complicated year for many of us, for probably everyone. And so that, you know, I think has an additional, you know, it really warms my heart. So thank you so much, folks. We really, we really appreciate your contributions. It wouldn't be possible without you. Um, on this note, um, let's talk about governance. Now, um, I just wanted to quickly walk you through um, what happened this year with our governance. Um, we earlier in the year realized that um, we probably had gone a little bit overboard in terms of over governing and over engineering our community. And so we wanted to make sure that we brought back the focus on allowing innovation to happen and have governance that is simplified, flexible, and really easy to understand. Um, with that, we also took the occasion and the opportunity to harmonize as we move under the Linux Foundation, while of course the goal had was always to keep our governance almost verbatim uh, under this move. There of course have been you know, small changes and adaptations even just in verbiage uh, uh, or the name of our company that had to be modified during this process. And then finally, again, our governance grew over five years and three iterations of FINAS, you know, the Symphony Software Foundation, FINAS, and then FINAS under the Linux Foundation. And so, you know, we personally thought uh, 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 and knew that the fragmentation of our information was an additional complexity for newcomers in the community. And so, You'll see, I'm not going to go through the process and sort of the, the paper trail that you see here, 
uh, the, the end state is that now we have a consolidated simplified uh, governance and I have, you know, five, oops, that's wrong, wrong link folks, apologies for that. I have five things I'd like you to know. Um, there's of course more than that, but I think these five items are really fundamental for whether you are a project maintainer or you are learning about Pinus. Um, I just want you to know these five things. One, all of our community governance and several of our corporate governance documents are now single source and stored in the famous community GitHub repo, um, which is linked there. It's github.com slash famous slash community. Uh, what you'll find there, and again, I repeat it, start that repository because a lot of our uh, uh, new conversations, early conversations, as well as governance conversations are happening there. So make sure that, you know, by starting the repository, you get updates and you you know, can really proactively participate. But if you go to that repository, you'll find that all of our governance in, in a single place, starting from the corporate governance down to uh, uh, governance templates for standard projects, software projects, and special interest groups. Um, the goal here is not only to have a single source, uh, but also to allow anyone in the community really to not only help keep you know, the governance in consistent, you know, if you find issues and fixes, you can just raise a pull request, but also proposing changes. We wanted to go even more transparent in terms of, again, is there something that you wanna change in the governance? Please raise a pull request. And then from there, you know, we can have a lively conversation and bring it to the right level of approval. Um, the second point, was we introduced the concept of special interest groups. It was a concept that didn't exist prior. It's very common in open source communities and certainly in the Linux Foundation. And we've seen already very strong initial interest like the diversity and inclusion special interest group, the RAG uh, uh, special interest group that is forming potentially DevOps neutralization becoming a special interest group. I wanna just qualify what those are. Um, you know, over time, especially as we're bringing together a, an industry that is relatively new to open source, uh, we realize that in some cases there is value in the conversation itself, in bringing together peers from the industry, even prior that a clear project or a clear standard is ready to be started. Uh, one main example is certainly open source readiness, where we, you know, have major, made major inroads in how firms can contribute. Uh, uh, the proof being this year we are coming from banks, but it's not a software project. It doesn't need the governance, the heavyweight governance, if you want, or the uh, uh, infrastructure that a software project needs. And so we now have this concept of special interest group that allows not only conversations to start to hopefully then become fully fledged projects, but also it requires board approval. And therefore it gives an opportunity for new ideas to be brought to the board and to gauge interest ahead of starting any new effort there. Um, so on one hand, we'd love to see more special interest group. On the other hand, we wanna make sure that they're focused and actually deliver value to the whole foundation. Um, we had an individual membership concept in, uh, uh, prior to April, this is now referred to as the individual supporter program in our governance. You can find all the details. Uh, if you think you qualify, you'd like to be considered, um, that is quasi membership. If you want, it definitely gives you most of the, uh, uh benefits of a membership if you're an individual contributor that is actually planning to contribute and advocate for fitness in the next 12 months. Uh, it does not give you an actual full member voting status uh, um, as far as, you know, concerned. Um, and then I think this is one of probably the part that I'm most excited with. Uh, we have simplified our governance to the point 
that it fits into a contributing.md file. And so you'll see in this new governance that we have a template that we provide for software projects and a template that we provide for standard projects. And those can easily be simply added to your contributing.md or your readme.md and just be always there front and center, close to the code that they are governing. Um, the, as the aspect that I think you might be interested in here is that we are allowing project teams to change their governance by a majority vote. This is a major new item uh, and a major element of flexibility. We think each project needs that flexibility, uh, but of course we want to provide the sensible default that you don't need to change. Um, of course, any changes to the governance will have to still comply with the overall Spinos policies like code of conduct, uh, antitrust, conflict of interest, uh, and we'll be always there to help you uh, uh, validate if a governance proposal change, proposed change is kosher. And then finally, uh, you've heard us talking about formation now for a couple of quarters. So we have introduced the formation lifecycle stage. It is an optional stage, but we're seeing more and more projects, you know, needing to, to go to a phase of coalition building, if you want, before we get started. And so that's the stage where you might not see the project yet fully open sourced, Alloy being an example, or Morphir in the previous quarter, although again, Morphir was open source in and of itself before, uh, but we now have this formal concept in the life cycle. And finally, we have, uh, uh, again, formalized the concept of quarterly focus projects. Again, if you go to this link, you also can propose yourself, your project, as a focus project for the next quarter. As you know, the board on a quarterly basis selects five to six projects for us to provide extra help to as famous. Um, there's a couple of open items. Um, again, uh, though I think we're gonna slow play. Uh, technically, we should go on and you know send pull requests to all the existing projects uh, to uh, uh, formally adopt the new governance. Again, we're not fast tracking this. Uh, we'd love to hear from you first, whether you're interested to take that or continue with the sort of old governance. Um, so don't expect a whole lot of work there. Uh, we're gonna be mostly reactive to your asks. And then finally, now that we remove programs, we need to finalize the reporting process, but for the time being, in terms of board reporting, like we've done in July, we will, ask focus projects to uh, report. And so those are the sort of five or six projects that we'll bring up to the board uh, on a quarterly basis. Um, and with that, I know we are almost at the end. Oops, actually there was, I'm missing a slide here, folks. Just a sec. Um, Um, okay, um, we actually, okay, sorry folks, <laughs> that's what the slide was. Um, <laughs> James, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just go through this since we are uh, uh, only two minutes, I wanna make sure we, we, we get through it, uh, if that's okay. So, um, on one hand, we, we updated the governance, but we want to make sure, again, especially if you're a Finos maintainer and you're here on the line, know that our goal is to always provide tools for you to be able to perform your responsibility as a maintainer in the least possible overhead kind of way. Uh, and so you probably are familiar with our open developer platform. If you are not, go to odp.pinos.org. There is thorough documentation on the, uh, uh, all the different um, tools and uh, services that we provide to our projects and to our contributors. But we wanted to extrapolate, once again, five of them that are key maintainer responsibilities, which we think uh, it was worth providing a cheat sheet for you uh, for. Um, so, Again, I'm not gonna go through every single detail here because we are uh, uh, two minutes from the end, but 
if you're looking to build and deploy your your uh, project, we have a whole CI/CD pipeline and our infra team able to help. Uh, so don't don't feel like you're on your own. We can help you set up your build and release process. Um, we've had consistently positive feedback on our documentation framework. Uh, documentation is always something that, uh, especially hardcore developers, you know, tends to be a a, a sometimes a, an afterthought. Well, we have a whole framework that you can use to actually make sure that you start with documentation from the get-go that is auto-generated, that is auto-published. Um, so please take a look at our DocuSaurus uh, Doc framework, um, DocuSaurus based framework. Um, of course, a big responsibility for maintainers is, uh, and you know, Finos has been helping there uh, and will continue to, but ideally the maintainers should run meetings. Uh, when a project is actually holding meetings. Um, make sure that you review uh, the refresh page that we put together on how to run good meetings or meeting procedures, but also know that we provided a very, I think, simple to use uh, meeting attendance tracker uh, that's based on GitHub. Uh, and you can use GitHub issues and that will automatically flow in our metrics and uh, systems of record. Um, security vulnerability issues. You, you've heard from us over the last few months. Of course, security in our industry is probably even more of, a, of an important item to make sure that all of our projects uh, are on top of their security vulnerabilities. Um, so we have tools like white source that you can and should uh, uh, um, uh, um, and should use. Uh, again, reach out to our infra team if uh, uh, you uh, uh, don't know where to start, but this is a really good link uh, for you to understand and related to it. Once you find vulnerabilities, we have a full responsible disclosure policy. Please take a look at it. Of course, there might be sensitive aspects there. And so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we borrowed our policy uh, uh, by and large from Apache a very, very established policy, make sure that uh, you get familiar with it. And then finally, uh, it, you know, if you're new to open source and you're looking to grow the maturity of a project, we know, and of course we help uh, from Finos, but we know it's not easy to grow a an open source project into a successful one. That's where the project life cycle comes in. If you get familiar with the incubating and, and active stage, that gives you an actual blueprint of, you know, what should you be targeting to in order to, um, you know, maximize the opportunity to, to have a successful project out there. Um, of course, we're gonna share these slides. I, I wanna make sure that you guys have, you know, very easy reference and, and cheat sheets here, um, but please uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions there. And with that, I know that we are two minutes over time. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any uh, question. I'm not seeing many questions in the chat. Um, but I'd be happy to take one or two if people can stay on. Everyone shy today? Maybe so, next meeting. Yeah, I was going to say, feel free to come off mute, um, people who are on the line, if you've got any questions for across any of our, um, well, across the, the, the cheat sheet and anything else that you've heard on today's call. I think we're good, Gab. Okay. Um, just a second. Everything was super clear. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, apart from this last snaffle on my slides, which <laughs> I, I just fixed because I wanted to close this meeting on a call to action. <laughs> uh, I just had forgotten to move it to the next slide. Um, so, again, 
please don't hesitate to send us questions, um, you know, to all at finance.org, info at finance.org, help at finance.org. Um, but as a next step, please take a look at the Open Source Community Forum website, register. We uh, are going to announce speakers very soon. We've had a, an amazing uh, uh, um, turnout in terms of call for papers. This is going to be a virtual event and it's going to be produced by the Linux Foundation, who has been running virtual events throughout the whole year. So, uh, uh, we expect this to be an amazing experience uh, as much as I will. I'm not going to, to, to thank you in person for your contributions, but we look forward to seeing you all on November 12th and 13th. And with that, if there are no final questions, I want to thank everyone for attending and. Hi, just one question. Sorry. Hey, no worries. <laughs> Hey, Richard. Um, no, I was, I was just going to ask if you can also share all the links in the chat. So oh, there's, absolutely. There's, yeah, there's been quite a few links posted to the chat, so we're just going to ask if you can share that as well. Absolutely, we'll do. Most of them should be um, in the deck as well, but we'll make sure that, that we share it as well. I'm actually copy-pasting right now. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Any further questions? Okay, and so with that, uh, thank you so much, folks. I really appreciate your contribution and have a great uh, uh, September, I guess. Hopefully, less smoky and less fiery than here in California. So, have a good rest of your day. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys.